Uh, g'day Peter here, I'm just uh, going for a walk, it's a really nice day out um, in, uh, in my local little area and I just thought I'd um, make a little video and talk to you about, uh, about uh, what you actually need to do to get married to a Vietnamese girl if you're a foreigner or a Westerner, um, particularly if you're from Australia. I, I don't know about other countries but it'll be a similar process. Um, yeah, so anyway, um, but yeah. Uh, so if you're wanting to get married here, uh, if you go to a, like a lawyer or that or a marriage agent, I got quoted like three thousand to five thousand dollars to get married here, and they made it out to be all a big deal, and oh, it's all terrible. Um, but the punchline to this is that I've already got all of that done, and I know how it's done now, and I know how simple it is. So if you finish watching this video, you'll know how simple it is too. Um, anyway. Uh, uh, the first thing I have to do, or you have to do, is get a no impediment to marry uh, certificate from the Australian Embassy. Um, I guess if you're American you need a similar type of document, um, but just says that uh, uh, there's no reason why you can't get married um, in Vietnam. And then, um, and then uh, uh, when I went to the Australian Embassy, it cost about two million two hundred or something. I booked an appointment. Uh, uh, one thing they didn't tell me on the website was you need they need to interview the person that you're going to marry, um, and so uh, and just make sure that you know she's consenting to marry and all of those things, uh, and check her ID. And so uh, I, I uh, lucky for me the coronavirus was on, and so when I went in, they they preferred to actually do that on the phone anyway than rather than have her come in. Uh, so I was, I was kind of lucky on that score, but I'd recommend you bring your partner. Uh, uh, now, and it said on the website you come in one day and then you come back the next day and pick up your documents. I guess they weren't busy at the moment, um, and so uh, so I I came in and I came back a couple of hours later and picked up my documents. So now, and they cost two million two hundred or something like that. Now. Uh, 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 and when they do the documents uh, for the no impediment to marry, they actually translate it into Vietnamese for you already for the for the Australian Embassy document that says that. Uh, I I went and got my divorce document translated as well, um, just in case, and and I got both of those notarised. Right. So that was the next step. So the, the first step is go to the embassy, right? Um, get that no impediment to marry um, form, and pay your money. Uh, and then the next step is to go to the Vietnamese uh, consular. Uh, um, uh, I think it's, it's next door to the to the immigration department in Hanoi, and uh, there you've got to um, uh, you've got to get your Australian documents notarised. Now, so even though it came from the Australian embassy, I've got to get it notarised in Vietnam that I'm, I've got no impediment to marry. So, so, um, but. <laughs> But that was a lot harder to do. Uh, um, watch this little video clip and that'll explain that. Uh, okay, Peter here from uh, Pacific Trading Post. I'm just actually uh, outside of the consular department, 40 Tran Foot Street, uh, Bing Dao, Bing Ba Bing District, Hanoi. Um, and that's uh, where you actually get documents notarised. And so, First of all, I went to the Australian Embassy to get the um, no impediment to marry um, uh, document uh, to say that I was divorced in Australia, so so then I can register my marriage in Vietnam. Now we got married back in March, um, and so so there's this whole process we got to go through. Um, but uh, but anyway, so I went over there to to the uh, consular for Vietnam to get the document notarised by them. Um, so the Australian Embassy was really good. They, they gave it to me within an hour. Um, uh, there was a few things I had to do. I had to have ID for my partner in Vietnam, my new partner that I'm gonna marry, and they had to ring her. Uh, would have been better, they said, if I'd brought her with me, but they just rang her because uh, she's working. And then, um, uh, and then they gave me the, the no impediment to marry document translated into Vietnamese as well and notarised my Australian divorce certificate. So I got the two documents. Anyway, so then I came to the Vietnamese consulate um, at 11.30 and they told me it's closed until two o'clock. Um, so, so the consular department. So don't go there in the middle of lunchtime. 
uh, and then I waited in line at two o'clock and then they told me, oh no, you need photocopies of your passport, you need a photocopy of the documents and you also need to go online um, and go to this address for the, consulate, for the consular department and download this form um, and fill it out. Now the form is LS slash HPH 2012 slash TK. So that's the form. And and uh, like I, I went, oh crap, like I got no idea how to fill this form in. I can't even speak Vietnamese to, to know where to fill it in. But uh, but luckily I came across the road here to the, the photocopy shop and the photocopy shop here um, they um, uh, they charged me 30 VND. I walked in, I photocopied the documents I needed, and then the guy at the computer looked up the address for me. And you actually got to fill the form in online, and it is in English, so there is an English version. So if you've got access to a printer, you can do it. But if you don't have access to a printer, you can't. So he, lucky for me, he filled in the form. Sorry about the mask at the moment, because coronavirus, and I'm out on the street, you're supposed to have masks on. Um, but he filled in the form for me and uh, printed it off. So it only cost me 30,000 VND um, in this little uh, photocopy shop across the road from the consular. Now, if you want to get your visa extended, I think the immigration department is right next door. So that's immigration department right next door, so in Hanoi. So if you need a visa extension, you go there. Uh, so it's really handy having a photocopy shop across the road that actually helps you. There's a dodgy little one down over there that, that didn't look much chop, but um, uh, so I came to this one and I'm glad I did because the guys here could speak English a bit and they actually filled out the form for me online and printed it for me and it cost 30,000 VND, so $2. Um, <clears throat> you'd wonder for $2 why the Vietnamese government wouldn't actually have the photocopier there and maybe even have a computer for you to fill the thing in. But anyway, um, so that's me. I'm going to head back across the road now and get these documents notarised, I hope. I hope that's all I need to do. Um, and then I'm one more step closer to, to being married in Vietnam. So um, sorry about that to all the single ladies out there that had their eye on my videos. Um, but anyway, um, <coughs> uh, uh, I've got a very lovely wife in, in Vietnam and, and it'll be great to, uh, to have a family here. So anyway, like, comment, subscribe and share. Uh, and you notice how quiet the streets are? This isn't normal. This is the, because of the coronavirus. It's uh, late April, uh, April 28th actually, and um, uh, and so yeah, um, that's why it's so quiet. And uh, yep. So now you know how to do that. So uh, um, uh, and if you hadn't watched that, you'd probably be like me in there trying to talk English to people who don't understand. Anyway, uh, so so now you've got your documents notarised. I came back and picked them up the, the next day. It cost me um, about uh, 300, and 300 odd thousand VND to pick them up, which is like 20 or 30 dollars. Uh, so not very much for the notarisation. Uh, and then, and then, and then, so that's step two. And step three is you need a medical certificate. So I went and um, got a, uh, a medical certificate. Uh, now I'd done one in Australia and uh, my future wife had done one in Vietnam in Hanoi actually. Uh, and when we took it to the registry, they said, oh no, no, we want a local medical certificate because it doesn't look the same. So, so <laughs> even though there's a lot of websites say, oh, I'll go into Hanoi and get it done in there and whatever and, and that, um, yeah, they don't accept it. So, uh, uh, and and I actually said to Lily, oh, did you offer some money to them to accept it? And she said, oh yes, actually I did. And I was joking, but she had actually done that. And um, and she said, oh no, but they were scared that if if uh, if they did it and accepted it and approved it, uh, and somebody checked it in a couple of years' time or or any time, they might lose their job. So because now they're actually sacking people for taking bribes. What? You know. Um, anyway, uh, uh, but luckily. Uh, not everywhere um, is worried about that because we needed a medical certificate in a hurry so we went to the, the local hospital and um, uh, and um, and if you pay a bit extra money it's almost like private 
health cover, your pay, user pays, they paid a bit of extra money and we got, um, uh, we got seen straight away, uh, got a blood test done uh, and, then, um, and then they issued our medical certificates within a couple of hours to us um, for both of us and that cost us about uh, three or four million including the bribes, right? Um, uh, the actual medical certificate only cost 1200 each, uh, no sorry, 700,000 each and then but we had to pay some people to get it done in a hurry um, uh, but but three million is only 200 bucks um, so we, we got that done straight away it's all in Vietnamese and then we went so that's step three right so first um, uh, no impediment to marry uh, then get your documents uh, notarized in Vietnam right uh, and watch that little video about that because that, that's really helpful um, and then step three um, uh, get your medical examination done uh, locally to where you're getting married. Now, now in Vietnam, she, uh, you have to get married in the same province as what you're registered to live in, right? And because I'm not registered anywhere, uh, and she's registered where her parents were, we had to get married in that province. So, so even if you've met her in Ho Chi Minh, she's going to have to come back to her local province more than likely to get to actually register the marriage. But anyway, um, that's a side point. Um, but then we just took the documents into the local registry. Now the local registry, um, uh, you know, we have to pay them as well. Um, there's the registration fee, which was about a million VND, and there's the um, uh, the the bribe, for lack of a better word. Now it's not really a bribe. Uh, it's just if you want everything to go smoothly and get your documents back and get it approved. Uh, then you should pay the people some money who are going to do that job well and proficiently otherwise your application might go to the bottom of the pile and never be seen again um, because only the people who pay get put on the top um, so I think that's how it works anyway um, so uh, so I um, um, uh, so we paid the, the money then handed in the documents she was happy ticked them all off and we walked out. So all up, that's cost uh, about two, um, three, uh, uh, five, six, um, seven, eight. Yeah. So less than ten million. So so seven hundred dollars or something. Um, uh, uh, that's a lot cheaper than what I was quoted from all the lawyers and things uh, around the place. Um, but um, but as we're passing by a, um, a a place where you catch catfish. What's the difference between a scum-sucking uh, bottom dweller and a lawyer? Um, hang on, there's nothing. Oh, I messed that joke up. What's the difference between a catfish and a, uh, and a, and a lawyer? Well, one's a scum-sucking dwell, bottom dweller and the other one's a lawyer. Um, but, oh, the other one's a fish. Oh, I messed all of that up. I'll edit this out on the cuts. Anyway, that's a dad joke, you know. Oh, um, but it's a beautiful, beautiful little area here, um, and I like walking through here. Xin chào, xin chào. Xin chào. Việt Nam. Uh, are you feeding the fish now? Ah, ah, con cá. Ah, there we go. Ah, all the fish will come over now. Ah, very good. So feed all the fish uh, meal. So, hey, there must be some some good sized fish in here. <laughs> well done, <laughs> come on. <laughs> there you go. Oh. Hey, look at them go. <laughs> <laughs> um, so yeah anyway so um, uh, uh, I got all the documents done uh, uh, here's another lady coming past yeah yeah that oh, was good con car oh. mm, come on um, <laughs> you got got a lot of these little bikes too um, uh, they, they got little container holders so that's a drum holder on the side of a push bike um, but anyway, uh, so uh, yeah, so anyway, so you, um, uh, so we've done all the documents now, and and then it's a three-week wait. And I said to Lily, I said, what if um, what if they don't approve our um, 
uh, our application to be married. She said, oh, well, then we asked for our bribe back. Um, and I didn't know bribes worked both ways. I didn't know if they didn't do what they were paid to do, you get your bribe back. But, but apparently, unless the person dies, you, you get your bribe back. So that's good to know. Um, and, and another thing I learned was if you, if you want to find a car park at the hospital, um, there's always a handy security guard person there that, that will let you park somewhere where you're not supposed to park for about 10,000 VND. So that's just a, a pro tip for you, if you like. Um, and that lady just came into this little house here. Uh, what a beautiful little house. Um, uh, I mean, I wouldn't probably like to live there per se, but, but, uh, but she'll be feeding the fish in here, I guess. So, um, anyway, uh, all right, uh, I hope that helps somebody. Um, so if you um, don't want to uh, pay a fortune to lawyers to marry your uh, Vietnamese sweetheart, then, um, then follow my tips, uh, uh, my four steps. Uh, no impediment to marry, notarize your documents, uh, get a health check, and then register at your local um, you know, uh, Vietnamese office where they register marriages. Seems pretty simple. A lot simpler than what they make it out to be on the websites where they say that you need 400 copies of everything. I mean, I did have a copy of my passport. I did need that. I did, I did um, uh, have a, have a uh, translated copy of my, um, uh, of my divorce certificate. Uh, uh, and it was notarized as well. So, so that, that's the only, you know, I'm pretty sure that's all the boxes I ticked. So anyway, all right, like, comment, subscribe, share, and, and if you want to know anything about Vietnam, uh, put it in the comments and I'll make a video on it.